This is Captain Sweep of Planetary Guardians, and I'm here with Jordan Stallman to do our weekly chat, catch up, and find out what is happening between us. Welcome, Jordan. What's been happening, my man? Thank you very much. It's good to be here with the Fiery Wizard. <laughs> we've been um, we've been exploring our priorities in terms of a flow that we can meet our all our needs. All our needs by the end of the week, we feel um, we've been productive and we feel healthy and we feel we're in alignment and and in charge of the the quality of our life. Mm -hmm. um, I've been let's see. So. Let me just show you some, some, so you get a sense of what's going on here. So I've took all the 30 primary media shows that I've been um, cultivating, and I have 30 businesses. Mm -hmm. So I have, here's a, here's a legend of kind of how, if, to recap on last week, when you're starting the media show, when you're starting to watch the show, it goes in blocks of, there's actually a, a sequence, a pattern. It's kind of like a yellow brick road mm. around the energies of your life. Mm. And you're moving around this pattern and it's, it just creates this way of your, your brain, your brain, your neurology, your physicality, everything gets met. Every part of your needs get met by going around this circuit in a really beautiful way. And it actually helps accelerate you into accessing your brilliance and passion because every piece is like, here's where you're activating and here's where that naturally that activation leads and it just keeps catching you and catching you and catching you and you just feel met by by the way that you're showing up for yourself in your life mm -hmm. so i have 30 basic 30 regions that it goes that that cycle goes through and i've created 30 different businesses and so each one of these businesses is actually something that i can develop that a specific part of my, like uh, a, do, a frequency domain of my neurology is actually attached to one of these domains. So basically if I'm running 30 different companies and I'm hiring teams, the teams are actually gonna be able to interact almost telepathically because they, they were created from like a, a inside my own consciousness. So my consciousness knows how to interact with different regions and I'm mapping out, I'm starting to learn and organize my consciousness into these 30 regions and realizing how they relate. And so if I'm to hire a team to basically represent that region, they're gonna be able to telepathically communicate with another company. And they don't even have to have met that company because the flow, the patterning is just naturally engaged for um, the communication threads to already be uh, established in terms of energy transference mm. um, so now I'm looking at this piece now almost like a if you cut down a tree if you cut a tree and you were to look at the um, the the stump basically it's kind of like a ring like that so it's like it grows it grows upwards and it's actually like it's actually like a vertical strand and in that way I'm looking at it like a cord and if I if, if it was like a bass chord or a guitar chord and I strum it, the, the vibration of that ring is going to be my entire fullness, every part of my being. Oh. Oh, one second. There, every part of my being, when I ring that chord, it's, it's coming from my heart, it's coming from my passion and my entire aliveness is gonna resonate and the cleaner, energy goes from one domain to another the the more fluid i can feel my my experience the more the closer to i guess you could say my um you could say my divinity my my natural connection with life itself is going to become more defined and more enriched and i'm going to feel more alive because the the space in between one region to another is has more intimacy and it's more relatable it's more interlaced so it just naturally flows one into another and it starts creating like these be this beautiful ballet of seamless integration between one part of your consciousness with another and bridging in this in this in this way that just feels like ecstasy to draw your attention across 
Right. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> Do you want to respond to that? Should I pause for a second? Well, I, I'm just seeing that what happens when you put parts into holes, and when you design from a whole system perspective, and you take into account levels above and levels below, and how they connect together, and using sacred geometry or patterns to do so, it creates, uh, as you said, uh, harmonic pathways in the mind so that you feel connection between all parts, and then you can sort of project it into the outer world and connect to the outer world through that idea or system. And then that becomes your sort of the interaction point with how you assess meaning and significance. Oh, my gosh. I'm so grateful for you. It feels so good to be met. Like, yeah. I mean, you, one, one man, you, man can understand another. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. And and just like the way that you've set up your mapping structure and just to, to have been trained by you in the ways of understanding how parts interact has really been a massive accelerator for how I've been able to do this because seeing how, you know, the inflammatrix maps, how the pieces are designed to feed each other. And the parts actually turn, like the circles actually spin and, and share energy in a cyclical fashion. That's been like, I mean, that's just like the, the fundamental of how functionality is how energy is exchanged from one region to, in, to, to the next. Mm. Well, but I, I see that the more people that use the tools uh, increases the power for everyone because now that movement is happening between us all. And I'm hoping to have some sort of dull, boring connective structures. And you seem to have some pretty interesting, uh, I don't even want to give a name to them, but uh, everyone can custom design their own, right? And that's the point is, is each of us is a unique, unique creator being, but we've been taught to think in a very limited way about ourselves. And so for us to be, let's say the immortal soul, and coming into this physical existence, it's our mind that is the interaction point between them. And how we design or set up that mind is very important. And what you're doing is showing the world how you're doing it. And that is a very unique way. And so I'm, I'm, I'm glad to hear more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's just like, it's just a basic structure. It's like, it's not like telling anybody if you're going to in involve like a group or a community of people like they have absolute freedom to define the culture of their life. It's not like you're you're not even you're not telling anybody to do anything. If people want to share in this, it's just here's a structure like do whatever you want, like map map your your life however you want to map it. And here's the here's some paper and and pencil and some some basic guidelines for you to to basically have a a step up to be able to define yourself mm. you know it's, it's it's just a way that everybody can program exactly the life that they want to create well what i found is i mean it sounds nice but people are so unfamiliar with designing their own structures they've always been handed a structure and they don't even know they have and so as children, we're given these models and we're given these curriculums and we're given these ways of learning that may not have been to our best sort of empowerment. And I think what's happening now is as we begin to free ourselves, that we can hopefully influence children and yet the younger generations to really take control of the design of their own learning, the design of their own curriculums, the design of their own mind, the design of their own consciousness flows. And then they're going to they're going to leave us all behind. I mean, uh, not you, but I mean, uh, my generation <laughs> is going to be the last generation of, I think, of 3D thinking and uh, hopefully fear-based thinking, but we'll see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, well, we, I mean, we, we have the tools. Everybody, like all the, especially kids, especially kids, are trained in all the tools. It's just in this paradigm in this current um current like structure of society the tools aren't being used in an optimal way to be able to co-create your dream reality but like things like um, messenger and facebook and patreon and twitter we have so many 
structures of technology that people have been training their minds to use. So they have a proficiency in how to use, but they don't know how to apply in a way that's really um, sustainable. You know? And like the game like Minesweeper is huge for, for young people. And you're just, you're creating worlds out of blocks. And people have, and kids have been trained to think in that way in, through these games creating their worlds out of blocks and mining for resources and and now if you just take that low poly game concept and just apply it to your own mind and your life and your community you start you just gamify your world and instead of you know taking the time to go into a, a digital game to 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 play that you're just applying the game structure to your life and getting you know and and meeting with people and communities and and dis like mining for the truth about your passion and it's the same functionality it's just in a way that you're you're creating reality like a real reality that you're living in not just in a game not just in a computer game but in your actual reality domain i have something very interesting to show you that's a, a bit of a breakthrough for Planetary Guardians. Ooh, and okay. I'm, uh, just wait, I'll pause and then I'll share. Just wait a sec. Okay, so well, maybe that's going to be a little secret for now. We're not going to have that shown. We thought we did share it, but uh, for some reason, of course, I didn't press the record button in the right way. Okay. And, uh, we okay, that. good. Yeah. So, that's a really good surprise. Yeah, the universe is going to wait. Uh, maybe on the next show we can share we can can share that with you and get Jordan inside there. But basically what we're doing is we're creating the Inflowmatrix software system, which is the operating system behind the shared knowledge communities and the various uh, ideas behind Planetary Guardians. And then on top of that foundation, other people can layer on their different functional models and uh, discoveries or inventions as Jordan is doing. And so what we're doing here is we're uh, having a little chat once a week to explore ideas that Jordan and I have been working on for at least a year and uh, our creative modes seem to connect in a way that is very powerful uh, because we're coming at it from such different places and I seem to have the inflow matrix and he might have the outflow matrix but we're still exploring what that is because whenever you bring conceptual models together and different ideas together that sometimes they match and sometimes they don't sometimes you have alignment and sometimes you don't but what I find with Jordan he's very open to experiment and play and to see how at least what I'm offering works with his own models and then he shares back with me and I learn from him because he has models and interpretations of reality that I don't have and so when originators and creators come together and they bring their work together with a spirit of cooperation rather than competition which can happen a lot between older and younger men and different people like that uh, but we've worked through quite a lot of that not to say that it won't come up again, but uh, as creators, it's it's a difficult space to meet another creator if you haven't got your own work out in the world. And uh, sometimes you're looking for help, and the other person's, mm. no, I don't want to help. I want to take what you're doing and go do what I want to do. And that sometimes doesn't go over that well. And it's it's hard to find people who can really share creativity with a constant awareness that you know, it's, it's a delicate and subtle road, and it's not always easy to understand where another person's at and what they want to do with their own work and what they want to do with their own life. And so uh, conflict can happen. And I've seen that quite a lot over the years with me and interacting with other people because what I have is a structure that does integrate with other people's structures, but they may not want to. And they may not want to learn whatever it is that I'm putting forward, even though what I'm putting forward is hopefully an infrastructure for us all. And that isn't always uh, understood or appreciated in the moment when your system may be imposing its beliefs and ideas and values upon someone else's mind. And so that is something which in the course of this, I guess, discovery together and with other people is we're looking to find out how to find, how to create things that work, how to create a larger infrastructure that basically helps with the infrastructure and the marketing for creators so they can bring their work into the world in such a manner that it's not imposing or stealing or, or um, you know, taking the stuff and running 
with it and as the old paradigm does to so many artists that we want to build an infrastructure that is supportive is loving that is caring that um, takes into account the eccentricities of each artist and hopes to build a platform that all can really make the living that they want on so i don't know if you were experiencing that jordan but that's what we're attempting to aim at yeah that's beautiful well very well said that is a beautiful dream and and yeah it feels like both of us are on the you know like creating that in our own in our own ways and i know a lot of other people especially now are people are looking for commu like community and communities to come together and to to feel um to re really feel a sense of love within their community and an artistic exchange and interaction and validation and and accountability and um and and how they can feel fulfilled in especially this time where everybody's kind of physically separated we need to still maintain um a really a sense of community and a sense of interacting and engaging with the community mm. and so these structures are exactly what we need for for that okay so i got a question for you uh, you're talking about 30 shows, 30 businesses, and I know that I, I deal with a lot of high numbers and things that I do, and it may not appear to people that I'm doing anything because I'm just scribbling on papers and moving them around, and people may not understand the design process quite as, as we do. So I'm wondering in terms of practical reality and you uh, making those shows and making one show, do you have to work on all 30 at the same time? Do, are you yeah. gonna work on one and bring it all the way through and then duplicate it? How are you going to go about actually making these shows? Um, moving like lightning um, across all the shows simultaneously, all the businesses simultaneously. Um, you're the more you're, they need to all grow like a ripple out together. You can't do one and then another because it's actually a sustainable model. So one business actually takes the resources and the development of another business to be able to develop itself. And you know, uh, you're familiar with this, um, there's a thing that, you know, like, like kids would do where maybe five kids get in a circle and they, and they bend their knees and they lean back onto the person behind them's knees and they form a circle and they're all able to continue standing and support each other because they're all present simultaneously. If one person leaned down, they would just fall over, but since the other person has their back, they can maintain um, keeping their back like supported while the, other, the, while the next person supports them and the next person supports them and the next person supports them. Mm -hmm. And so you're, and actually, um, so it's kind of like if you're, if you're looking at, if one business is your right arm, you don't want to just spend all the time developing your right arm and have this really strong right arm while the rest of your body is, you know, you know, and, and if you're like, if you, if you went about, if you went about developing your body in that way, you wouldn't even be able to make it to maybe the gym or to, to be able to work out because your body would be so neglected on the other parts of it that you wouldn't even be able to get to the, to the weight to start working out that arm. So you, you really need to have an interlaced pattern and that's why that's why this map like that's why this map is so handy because it shows you a way that energy can move from one to, to the next. And it's not designed in a way of one, two, three, four. It's actually designed in a way that actually stitches um, using this map. It actually stitches the energy in really natural pathways. So that each part, you know, it's like we, we have this like, the way that I look at this is, this is space and this is like a suit and this is like your pilot. And so you have space and your suit and you're piloting this, you're piloting the space suit. And this pathway works from this part, the clarity is actually stitching orientation to rebirth, which is releasing into truth. And then truth is stitching love and grace into clarity. So these two are actually relating directly to each other. These two are relating directly to each other. But these, this one is 
like interlacing the pattern basically it's crisscrossing so that it has a very balanced way of interpreting this data of uh, this uh, energy transference and so you can't just you can't just go in a circle around the whole thing it's actually really important to have um, a pattern set that you're that you're training yourself to to shift your consciousness from one domain to another because that's where the resources are going to be exchanged you know the resources it doesn't just um you know you can't just work the right hemisphere and then the left hemisphere and then you know the frontal lobe you actually need to to build neural pathways between from from one region to another so that the whole system is being developed equally so your whole the expansion of your being is a very is very balanced order you know if you put if you're putting one just one more example if you're putting a tire on a car and uh and you're tightening the, the lug nuts um if you do it in a circle that by the time you get over one half the other half isn't is it's going to be lopsided so you need to do like a star pattern so that the entire tire gets secured in a very balanced fashion mm. so to our viewing audience who may not be aware jordan was pointing to a enneagram symbol in the back of his uh, map and if you don't know the enneagram you should look it up on google E N N E A G R A M it means nine points, and there's a, a three six nine a triangle in the middle, and then one four two eight five seven, and then back to one. And this is like a background structure that Jordan is using. That's a universal symbol that, when you map information on it, you sort of map on top of universal law. And this is an idea that George Gurdjieff brought into the world. And his student John Bennett, and it's very different from uh, Riso's and the other work on personality types with the Enneagram, but it, it integrates in. But it's looking at the Enneagram from the point of view of mapping processes rather than looking at personality types, and that may or may not mean something to anybody. But uh, right now, the map that he has doesn't have the Enneagram on it, and so it's, it might be a little bit more difficult to understand what he's talking about when he's moving his finger between these spots, but what there's the Enneagram and that's, and with time cycles on it. And that's one of the main things that I did is put time cycles on the Enneagram and you can just map different information on it. And it gives you a very unique and different perspective on how to organize information on the mind and on paper. But it again, connects into some natural laws that when you start to work with it, uh, things start to occur in a magical way because what you're doing is you're aligning your mind with universal symbols that connect into how the universe actually works. And that's the key to magic. That's the key to any higher kind of spiritual law. There's a scientific law. There's a spiritual law. It's all the same thing. Truth is truth. And what Jordan is doing is, is he's, he's got this map of, that we made with Veeam that are nine values that connect into the Veeam Dream Team, and that's a, one of the 30 businesses probably, or a connection to that business in terms of a, a video architecture that uh, uh, Ramayan Banji is working on with a team of people. And we are uh, part of that team, but we're kind of like on the in-between or the outside. We're kind of like creators that want to use the tool to do what we're doing. And that sometimes can be very different from developing the actual software from the inside. So Jordan, I think we're coming a bit to the end of our little interaction here. And I want to, to sort of maybe uh, assess how far you've come in the last week. And uh, did you take a look at that, that goal setting uh, document that I put into the business form? Uh, I did, I did, and I've been, uh... I've been exploring how to like what's really exciting um because I was like I, I was saying yesterday so we have we're um basically creating accountability and setting goals and, and remaining accountable to those goals but sometimes I'll set goals and then the day I'll do something really productive but it's not the goal I, in, I intended to do and so I'm noticing well the energy wasn't aligned in the reality 
for me to act on that goal, but it was set for me to act on this other goal. So if I create goals specifically to these different regions, so that I'm like my goals are actually leading to the development of one of these regions, um, then I can start to see where I'm like, um, how can I say? Um, basically, I what would be really helpful is how I could view my achievements in in succeeding my goals is if I could look back on what I've accomplished and see the data of of how my, like of how my mind was flow how my energy was flowing through the days so it's like if this day if thursday i was like really into oh i was really physical i wanted to maybe work on some dance routines right and and maybe do some like artistic projects like clothing design and then the next day i wanted to take like a you know research and development take a business course and uh, and explore some um you know co compile a list of, of potential collaborators right they have like basically isolating like what um putting them into categories and starting to see and and mapping which categories uh how can i al aligning to um, uh, it's just pretty new because i'm i'm still i'm still working out the categories that's been the challenge but i'm really excited to see how i flow like if I could see how my energy is flowing day to day and start looking at the tail of my temporal, like my, my past, basically looking at how I've been operating through time day to day to day in terms of what I've been like successfully accomplishing, I can actually see where that energy is and how it's moving into physicality and business and development and music and video production, all the categories that I have, I can start to, it, like explore patterns and I can see patterns because once I sample that and see that pattern like of my um, through my past through through what I've been logging I can look at that and say that's how my energy flows through the days like that's a sample of, of me my actual life and my actual energy stream so if that's true that means I can count on energy being replicated in that pattern again and so i can the more i log the categories of how my energy is flowing between a, achieving goals um, by categorizing my goals um, then i'm going to be able to understand how my mind how my how my mind is um how my energy is needing to be met day in a, in a sequential order mm. from category to category Right. Well, I, I think last week we spoke a bit about maybe not actually setting the goals, but actually just writing down each day what you accomplished, which is essentially what you talk about, right? And then tracking that over time and seeing, you know, what actually occurs as opposed to sort of trying to design what occurs. Uh, mm -hmm. I think things occur on their own, whether we like them or not. And I'm like, too, I'll, I'll set my mind. Oh, I know I got to do this, but then I'll work on five other things. And then I just couldn't seem to work on that other thing, but then I can say that, well, my flow is going this way, but to a normal business environment, that isn't sort of appreciated because people are all sort of working in unison on, on shared projects and they have their goals and it's, it's a very different approach to isolated creators who are just creating stuff that in the end will be a business, but in the meantime, the creator needs to be left alone do what they're doing and you, you might want to watch your thumb on your on your camera uh, okay it's, it's showing up on the screen quite a bit um <laughs> kind of like that's like the in the palm of my hand yeah i think the when we finally create what we're aiming at they'll look back at these and go how the heck did they create that from talking like that like what <laughs> what were those guys doing uh okay jordan so then uh, is there anything final you want to say uh before we check on out um let me just give you a quick like a quick preview of what i'm what i've been creating now that i have this kind of chord set up okay. um what i've been doing in terms of how i intend to set up the goals 
that might be helpful. So like I said, this is gonna resonate like a chord across these 30 divisions, mm -hmm. these 30 segments. But if I actually have strings, like basically 30 strands, and I'm able to divide them into categories like R&D, file management and, and page uh, maintenance, um, social outreach and accountability, minor video production, music production, dance movement, and art and design. And so all my goals should be able to, and I'm still working at the categories, just finalizing them, but my goals should be able to fit into one of these categories. And so I can be able to make sure that all the strands, all the 30 strands are actually um, rising together. I'm actually accomplishing everything in a, and, and starting to see, oh, here, I accomplished this goal this day and then this one and I can start drawing lines from a string string to string. Nice, right away. So that's what's on the way. That's uh, in the uh, okay. latest. Okay, so how about for next week? I'll have that software ready for you to take a look at and perhaps maybe some other maps and things because I'm working on about 10 interfaces right now. I think one that you've seen. Uh, and then we can again share our work see where we're at and uh maybe start to bring some other people in on the call maybe maybe a noah might be good to come in on the call maybe somebody else i'd like to have a uh, chats with four of us kind of to, to see where people are at how would you be open to that that sounds very fun yeah okay yeah, i'd like that okay jordan it has been uh very electrifying and uh inspiring to see you and to hear that you're on track and uh, making progress towards your ideal dream and your sacred space. And uh, this is Captain Sweep saying goodbye to everyone. And we will see you next week. Yeah, see you next week. Thank you, Captain. <laughs>